I had always wanted to, I wouldn't say always. When I was in undergrad, I came, I did a internship at AFI and it was such a cool experience. It was like maybe summer of 2007. Yeah. And it was such a great experience. I was like, oh man, I definitely want to come back here. But I think I want to work a little bit first before attending. And what did you do in that internship? Uh, so I worked both the Lifetime Achievement Award for Al Pacino as like a PA, as well as um, worked like as a PA for commencement. Yep. And then, and that was so cool because I was assigned to help Sean Connery and his bagpiper. I don't know if you remember this particular. Oh, I remember it was up on the glade. I mean, yeah. that's, that's like legendary, but you tell the story. It's uh, so, I mean, I just was happy to be there, but they said, okay, you're going to uh, like just hang out with this bagpiper. But they didn't tell me it was with, for Sean Connery. Um, just hang out with him, get him anything he needs, if he needs like water or whatever. And so we just hung out in the Sacred Heart like school down there. And then all of a sudden, like Sean Connery shows up and I'm like, what? And so he's like chatting with this bagpiper, you know, just like, you know, Scottish sort of things chatting about, you know, haggis or whatever. And I'm just hanging That's out. That's racist. That's there. racist. <laughs> <laughs> wait so you had only been in la a few days like maybe this, a week if that you had already done the life achievement award so you'd been around some celebrities you know i don't remember what order it was yeah um i think i think i cannot remember i mean yeah so this i think it was the commence i think it was lifetime achievement award first yeah uh and then commencement and then DWW. So yeah, but I had only been in LA for like a couple of weeks at that. And I had met Al Pacino. I got him in a New York Times. Uh, that was that was my <laughs> PA assignment for, for the day. Here's the thing. Like uh, we used to do that program. A lot of interns would come out over the summer and work on DW directing workshop for women. It's a program at AFI. Um, and then but but those interns as you're saying got to work on the two events that needed a lot of support but usually the interns got stuck like in the basement or like yeah. locking down traffic or doing them the worst jobs right you know like the most menial jobs especially which is so funny at life achievement word because we would rent you a tuxedo and mm -hmm. then you'd thrown into the belly of the kodak theater just you know telling people to be quiet or something um, but normally you're not like interacting with the ultimate star of the night no, and even even crazier, uh, gosh, shoot, um, I don't remember who I was working for, but they were like, you're going to be his right hand. Um, whatever he needs, just like go around with him. And so, you know, that's where he went to, to meet Al Pacino. And then we went down to the red carpet and I was like, well, I'm supposed to stay with him. So I just stayed right by, uh, I think it was Adam, what's his name? Uh, but so we're standing there on the red carpet and people are like going crazy because, like, you know, celebrities are going by and Adrian Brody went by and asked me if he could like go say hi to the crowd. I'm like, oh, sure. I don't know. I don't know why you're asking me. I guess he thought I was security or something. You should have said no. No, I'm yeah. sorry, Mr. Brody. No, you can't. Yeah, no, I was like really, I was struck by how tall he was, but the, uh, yeah, no, that was I was not st uh, stuck in the basement by the parking lot. No, I was I was in the middle of of all of that. It was that really is the amazing. middle of it. Not only yeah, being assigned to the most important people there, but you're on the red carpet, mm -hmm. which is like it's chaos, right? Oh yeah, it was really. Uh, I mean, it was kind of a good experience to just see how intense that is with all the uh, the flashing and the the cameras and stuff like that. Uh, and all the media people and I wasn't even no one even really cared I was there uh, and it was overwhelming <laughs> I can only imagine for you know the artists and celebrities and stuff like that yeah mm -hmm. do, do you remember any interactions besides getting him a paper uh, any interactions with Al Pacino 
no that's that's i really didn't it was about that and uh he was like busy or something with his family his family was there and so i was adjacent mm. but other than getting him the the new york times that was the the biggest moment i had with him <laughs> okay and so then somewhere around there cut to you're standing next to sir sean connery yeah yeah and so the whole point was just to just you know whatever they need i'm getting you know water snacks or whatever and we get in the van and start going up the hill and the bagpiper needs to warm up and so he starts warming up with his bagpipes in the van and i don't know if you've ever been around bagpipes but they're deafeningly loud like a hot, like sound of a jet airplane. And he hadn't been allowed to warm up downstairs because they didn't want to give away the surprise. But since we were like in the van or whatever, you know, they decided it was okay. But even with my hands over my ears, it was just blaring. And Shot Goddard was like losing his mind, laughing, like just having the best time, you know, being driven up the AFI hill with a bagpiper, you know, piping his bag bag in his pipes piping his bags whatever the just <laughs> play like and then his pipes <laughs> back in his pipes and then we get there and you know he walks up and the crowd freaks out i'm just like oh wow yeah this is pretty cool i think i maybe want to uh come here <laughs> now do you remember why he was there uh i can tell other, you i don't remember why he was there other than like the uh some, some commencement speech or something i don't know i don't really remember yeah he so well actually no now i'm confused i i want to say he was presenting the honorary degree to maybe that's it yeah to sir howard stringer who was the head of sony right who another night a night for a night but but the whole <laughs> the whole uh i guess show part of this show business moment was that we used to do our commencement uh, outside up on our glade here. We do it now at the, at the TCL Chinese theater, but was a, from the back of the whole setup, all these, you know, rows of chairs and all these people and families, you know, you would just hear bagpipes and then everyone turned. And then there was a bagpiper walking up. And then with him was Sean Connery, like milking it, right? Like slowly walking up the crowd, wearing a kilt. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, that was that's crazy. That that's a core memory for me. That's canon for sure. Yeah, that, that's one of my favorite AFI moments ever. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that that was just so awesome. Um, yeah, that's cool. I I totally forgot that you were right there next to them all. So there must have been something about you that they trusted you with these high profile jobs. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I I was in, I'd been doing film for undergrad, but. Uh... I was definitely, I was super eager, super excited uh, to be there. And that was my first time actually even being in California. Um, it was my fir first time for a lot of things. And I, I had, I drove my, I road tripped out and it was really like an epic. Because uh, I, I wanted to experience like physically, because, you know, when you fly, it's sort of like teleportation, especially if you fall asleep, you just show up. Um but driving, really, I felt like I was going somewhere. Um, and so I, you know, I'd driven out here and I was like renting a, a sub, like a, a, a illegal sublet out in Beverly Hills adjacent. Uh, I learned about uh, Beverly Hills adjacent uh, being a thing. <laughs> it's like, oh man, this place Slums is crazy. Beverly Hills. Wait, yeah. were you from um, SIU? I was from SMU. SMU, Southern Methodist. Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of there are a lot of SIU people there too, though. But yeah, it was great. It meant uh, made a lot of made a lot of friends, and then we did these uh, you know directing workshop for women uh, program. And the one I I worked on was called Side Effects, and it was like it was it was it was rough because it was an overnight, and it was like four overnights, and it was both very fun and very challenging. And so it was like a good introduction to sort of what production can have in store um and uh yeah it was fun and but yeah i mean i had all prior to that 
when I was younger, I'd wanted to be an actor and I didn't make it into the undergrad program that I was trying for. And so I thought I'd take some film classes instead and, you know, maybe go the backwards route. And I really liked storytelling in that way. And so after that, I was like, okay, I want to pursue this, but I'm not really sure how. And so when this opportunity to do the internship at AFI, that's where I was like, oh, okay, I have to do it. I have to get out there and see what it's like. And I, I mean, I really fell in love with LA and California and, you know, Hollywood and all the in, uh, idiosyncrasies that, that, that are out here. Um, and so when I graduated from undergrad, like within like two weeks, I packed up my car and just came out here uh, and Housing was a little cheaper then. It was a little easier to find an apartment. It was like, you just like showed up. I just came out and then I was like, okay, well, I'll find a place. And, you know, I found like a uh, converted hotel in Hollywood that was like a uh, built in the twenties or something. So it was like this historic thing. It was really neat. That's cool. Yeah. And um, were you the only SMU intern that year? There were... There were like three, okay, three or four. There weren't many. No, right. Yeah, I'm trying to find side effects. I'm I'm looking it up while you're talking. Whose film was that? Who directed it? I don't remember. It was either side effect or side effects. I think maybe side effect. I'm looking on your IMDb, but then it's like I don't even know what your role was. <laughs> it's I like... think I was like art department coordinator or something like that. Uh, oh. Gosh, who made that? The deck, writer, because there's it's, so many different it's categories. It's confusing because there's also they made like a Rooney one with Rooney Mara that's like site effects. Oh, you cut out for a second. You still there? Oh yeah, yeah. There you are. Okay. Uh oh, there it is. Side effect. Yeah, your art department coordinator. Mm -hmm. And it was. Liz Adams. That's right, Liz. Uh, How can yes. I forget Liz? Oh yeah, Liz. I didn't realize it was all night shoots. Was there a reason for that? Uh, spookiness, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh, because it it was like a scary thing, right? I remember she was always uh, the horror person. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it was uh, fun. And was that your first time working on a film, or had you done that? It was my first time working on a, a yeah, I, I, other than the stuff that we did in Texas and in undergrad, which was like super, super indie, sort of scrappy. Mm -hmm. But it, it was my first experience being on like a professional style, you know, with rules and stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing about AFI. It's like all the rules, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which, you know, that's it's the good thing. It's like, we teach you how like a studio movie is, is made, how a real movie is made. Um, so that when graduates go out and make their first movie, they know all the rules to break. Yep. It's, smart. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's since I being at AFI, I've been shocked by how few of the rules, a lot of productions want like follow. And this is coming from like companies and, you know, client directives. Where it's stuff like, you know, oh, yeah, you put together a, uh, a video team tomorrow. And you're like, oh, gosh, tomorrow. Can you imagine that if I trying to, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll figure this out, you know, over the weekend. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that would not happen. You'd be shut down at AFI. Yeah. Yeah. And the, uh, in terms of like crew requirements and stuff like that, it's, uh, it, I mean, the, some of the like, films i've worked on you know and like some of the like uh, after uh let's see gosh I've, I've done a few music music videos but other than like you know proper films a lot of the the branded content and like the uh sort of commercials and stuff like that have real loosey-goosey with with rules and, and permits and things like that and just right. not uh not caring nearly nearly as much as uh, i was expecting them to well, so looking at your, like when I was trying to find your side effect credit and I see you have like credits in every single category, every single department on a film. <laughs> and you say that you started out wanting to act when you went to film school, did you know what you wanted to do? 
No, and I didn't really even think that, I never even really thought of it um, until the opportunities to do certain things ca came my way. I was just sort of keeping an open mind and I actually did, I, I made a feature in undergrad over spring break. And that's one where I uh, produced it, directed it, wrote it. I uh, had somebody else film uh, do the uh, cinematography. And I think it was uh, at some some point in, I don't know, I'm not sure when, I just, I just sort of realized that I'm not as much into cinematography, uh, which is funny because I've really, lately I've, I've been doing a lot of photography, um, yeah. still photography. And uh it's just you know trying different things and you know I, I enjoyed it directing but it's a lot of work and i've not had that many opportunities to like direct other people's things and so it's sort of just naturally like producing and, and working in, in production it's just sort of na naturally went that way as you know i mean i've, I've tried you know, I think I've even I tried doing makeup once on somebody's like short film just to just to understand, you know, uh, to better appreciate what you know different departments need. Yeah. Um, I think I've done. I think I've tr at least at least tried out every department. I don't think I've tried to. I don't never. I've never steady camped. I don't know if I'm cut out for that. I would have to. Uh, I feel like I would break it. Very specific. Thing. But I mean, I, you you came out here, you got got the taste of AFI over a summer, mm -hmm. and then you applied, and you wanted to come here. Yeah, so I got the taste over the summer, uh, and then when at, after graduating undergrad, when I came out, I I knew that I wanted to go to AFI, but it's uh, I don't know where I got the idea in my head, or maybe somebody suggested spacing it out a little bit and not immediately going from one to the other. I think that's and, smart. Yeah, yeah, and you know, because I, I felt like I haven't had a chance to really refine anything before, and and you know, I mean, however people go is you know whatever is right for them. But for me, I definitely wanted some time to work in the industry, really understand what it is that I wanted to do before actually going to film school. And so I worked in a lot of reality TV. I did the massive amount of PA work on, you know, uh, things like Biggest Loser, Fear Factor, um, a lot of reality shows, which were, which was really, really good experience as far as like getting, you know, sense of pace and just the intensity of, of what is expected of us. Yeah. Um, and then, Kind of got burnt out in LA, went up to Seattle for a little bit, tried, you know, big fish, small pond, but I was just still a small fish uh, in even smaller pond, small you fish. Out, you small you pond. went up there and, and checked out the film industry there? The yeah, just to yeah. see someplace that was just to try something different. I had some friends up there. Uh, people had talked about how great Seattle was. I was like, oh, you know, I'll try it up there and it didn't quite work out. And so I'd actually... I broke my foot and had moved back in with my parents in, in Texas. And I was like, okay, I got to get out of Texas. I got to get back to LA. I don't have enough money to move out here. So why don't I apply to film school and get student loans? And so I used the student loan money to help pay for my move back out to LA and get situated and stuff like that. Oh, that's very unique. <laughs> reason to go to film school. i mean i but like i had already wanted to it was like i i know i definitely want to go to afi um at some point and then it was just whenever i'm whenever i'm ready will be that time and so then i was in texas i was like okay i got to get out of here what's what's going to be the the best and and most surefire way to to move with like a purpose and to not just fl flounder um it's like oh yeah no just go and get rid of that student loan money comes with the price of course but uh you know i mean yeah we do what we have to do to yeah. make these yeah. things happen and so i had i had met my well at the time we were, we were just dating now my wife but we had met in texas and 
so I told her very much, you know, that I do not want to stay here, you know, trying to get back to out to LA ASAP. Uh, and she was very supportive of that. And so, you know, I told her I was going to apply to AFI. Um, and we would sort of figure things out uh, if I got in. And so when I got in, I was like, okay, well, now we got to figure it out. And so we didn't want to move as boyfriend and girlfriend because that just seemed like need more of a like commitment on my on my part to yeah. have her come out here uh, with me. Uh, so we decided to get married because we weren't. Uh, I knew that I wanted to continue dating, um, and so after we. We had only dated for about four months. We met in February, got married in July, and oh my God, uh, drove out to LA in August. And like as part of our honeymoon, like we told people, don't don't get us gifts, just like put you know help us help us get out to LA. <laughs> and is, is she a film industry person? Now she is. Um, she <laughs> had done. Amber had studied art history and. Uh, Actually, actually, film, uh, cinema, television, but like from a from a critical, okay, uh, from a critical eye, like a sort of investigating Scorsese kind of deal, right? And uh, but now, but now she works in in costumes. Um, now she she actually just got promoted to be the executive assistant of to, for, to the president at a Western Costume Company. Oh, they're the big costume company. That's uh, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the Western Costume. Wow, good to know. So if I need a costume mm -hmm. hookup, I'm gonna be hitting you up. Yeah, uh, Sandy actually took a class over. He had reached out. Um, they did like a tour or something oh. like that. Yeah, they probably did, yeah probably in the beginning weeks like a boot camp. Yeah, so, yeah, one of the, whatever that was. I don't know. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, wait. So you you come to AFI with a wife. Mm -hmm. You remember in those first days, was there any orientation where it, like a second year fellow spoke to the class and said, now, if anybody's in a relationship, say goodbye to your, you know, spouse or whatever. Oh, yeah. No, and, I remember that. Yeah. And remember I also that? remember uh, other people like I caught like having phone calls with uh, graduates like, hey, what what can I expect? And a lot of people mentioning that, that like, oh, no, a lot of relationships fall through. It's like, oh, well, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's it's of course it's not a hundred percent. It it does yeah. happen, but I don't know why they have to make that a thing every year because it's just it's weirdly adds. It's not like you're gonna go break up with someone because someone said that, right? Yeah. So then it it just plants the seed in your in your mind. Yeah, it's a little strange. I uh, I do think like, I mean, this was part of the reason why we got married was like, okay, I don't want to be going through something so difficult and intense and just be like my boyfriend my girlfriend you know right. it's right um that that level of like intensity requires a, a level of, of commitment and so i think part of that sort of worked in my favor in that it's and also we were let's see so amber we'd only known each other for six months at that point and so a lot of the I think uh, drama of AFI, and my wife got her experience because you know she was trying to find a job, so she she worked on a few cycle films and stuff like that, and she was also involved with uh, like support supporting as opposed to like it taking away from each other. I don't know. Uh, yeah. She did. She got a job at Western probably within about six months so i think it was oh. uh so she's been there a while yeah she's been there almost uh almost nine years or just coming up on nine years wow something like that yeah it's it's so like the first semester of afi she didn't have a job and so we got to do a lot of the afi things like on set stuff together mm -hmm. uh, i don't know if that is that maybe a benefit maybe that's actually worse for some people because like <laughs> No, I think if you can, that's the thing. It's, I, it's, it, if you can figure out a way to integrate your, you know, your partner into the AFI program, because the person who enrolls in AFI can't do the opposite, right? Yeah. It's all consuming, right? 
So if you can figure out a way to yeah get your partner involved and the successful stories I've heard are like you and Amber where, yeah. you know, she's on set and she's helping out. And, and, and if they're into film or if they discover it that way, even better because they get that AFI education and experience without yeah. the tuition, <laughs> which is amazing. <laughs> yeah. 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 I guess that, yeah. You know, I think that's, so for us, it definitely worked for, for the benefit. And uh, then when yeah. she started working at Western, it was like enough of, I had enough going on and she had enough going on and, you know, it's uh yeah, I don't know. I uh, AFI is re really challenging, but at the same time, it's also very easy because all you have to do is like show up and challenge yourself to make a movie. It's like it's pass or right. fail, man. Like you, you, you right. either you either do it or you don't do it. And to me, I need that kind of. I do. I do really good with those kind of dualities. Uh, yeah. Like if there's if there's like a limitation where like on set you're like oh we can't do it because literally the you know the drawbridge is down or something like oh great you know piece of cake I'm not even stressed right. but when when you think you can maybe pull it off that's the worst <laughs> so you you never get too confident yeah you know and uh... but but also that's like the producer like the the job is to solve problems right mm -hmm. so if if you're not doing that, then you must probably feel like someone like yourself is probably like, well, what's my job here? <laughs> yeah. Why can't something go wrong so I can fix it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, to some degree, for sure. And that's where I always, uh, I always would hate sitting by monitor. I mean, there's a benefit to being able to like watch what's happening and provide feedback um, from a story point of view. But I get really bored at monitor and I just really get bored sitting there and seeing everybody like do stuff and so i even on stuff where i'm producing i just i can't help but just like futz a little bit yeah mm -hmm. yeah well i you know real producing is uh, if you've done your job then well, on set there's nothing to do because mm -hmm. it's all in pre-production right yeah 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 so okay so you you can handle the logistics and you like the challenges but what about the other part of producing which really separates the good producers from bad producers which is collaborating and managing people right communication mm -hmm. how did you do how did you do at i you know i i i think i did really in, in it's funny i as it was happening i don't even really i can't even remember even thinking about it but when i when i reflect back i think we did a really good job communicating in the groups i was a part of um Especially because there was it, it, where it really made a, a positive turn for me was actually during cycle one. Uh, the cinematographer I was working with was was Korean, uh, and spoke English, but in a limited capacity, and we kept butting heads and we kept sort of missing each other in our communication. And it really kind of like exploded when he, he was asking for more time. And I was saying, oh, no, 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 I, I think you can you can do this. Like, I bet you could do the. You could probably f make a feature in two weeks because you're so talented. You know, it's, it, it, he was a very, very talented cinematographer prior to coming to AFI. Uh, and that just really completely set him off the rails. And really pissed him off because what, when I was thought I was complimenting him, I guess in Korea, the only people that make movies in two weeks are like hack jobs. You know, it's just uh, oh, right, kind of right. shitty cinematography. You know, it, yeah. it, nobody of like high value, high quality artistic craft is going at the speeds. And so when I was like trying to amp this guy up and, um, encourage him it was doing the exact opposite mm -hmm. and we were like arguing in the in the parking lot or something and uh the director came out and he's like you know it's like we, we just need to get through this and i sort of expressed sort of what i was trying to say and he realized what i was trying to say and then he explained why he was upset and i was like oh and it was just sort of like this aha moment and 
you know, I've, I've always felt like I'm, I'm a pretty good listener. But after that, I was like, okay, really, really, you know, what's the, what's the story here? Like, what's the story being told in these conversations? And so every other project, even if we had challenges, um, I always felt like I did a pretty good job of trying to hear everyone's perspective and, you know, really focus on molding those together to make the best film possible. And, you know, I noticed that I got assigned sometimes to projects that were a little difficult or had challenges of communication. Um, and so oftentimes, like, and this would be as a crew member, you know, like as a production manager, where uh, when people were mad at each other, I, I was I was brought in to sort of mediate, uh, which I appreciate as like a compliment, but it was also very uncomfortable to be around yeah. people who don't want, who aren't like talking. And so, you know, there are a couple of times where like the producer and the director of a particular project that I was on weren't talking to one another. And so I was having to like relay information to, between them. And I did not like that. Uh, and so just seeing that has made it so important to me that I, we all understand we're on the same team and that we're all like, you know, working towards a common goal here. So after it's just like, you know, communication is so important. Yeah, well, you clearly are, are a good communicator, um, not just based on knowing you and talking to you, but also, like you said, being assigned to the problematic productions is a testament to you being a good communicator and uh, a, a, you know, a problem solver. And I don't know, you just have a, you have a good vibe, which yeah. I know, there's some, some things you can't teach. And I think like, that's one of them, which is yeah. you are naturally like, you probably get people to calm down and relax. Yeah. And yeah, I do. And it's uh it's that it's my Kennergy. <laughs> oh man, this is your year. I know I've been saying that to everybody. I've been when I introduce myself to people, if sort of like, sorry, what was your name? I'm saying Ken, like the movie. <laughs> and... like like the movie, which you know there's gonna be the spin-off that will just be Ken. Yeah. Right? And then yeah. then it's your time, man. Yeah. Did you go? Were you at Halloween? Were oh yeah. There? Uh oh I was um we uh what were we did we do anything? We just stayed home for Halloween. Mm. It's uh my wife had been working ho at Halloween Horror Nights as like because between the uh the strikes, Western had been closed down for a little while. And so she had been working at Halloween Horror Nights as mm. like just part time. And so it was like she was doing night shifts, I was day shifts working through and stuff during the day. So we didn't really see much of each other during October. Right. right. So, Halloween, we just stayed at home. So I was a different kind of Ken. <laughs> that, but that I didn't, I don't know why I didn't lead with that, but yeah, you're right. This is everything's, you know, Ken Uff and Kenergy and it's man. Oh yeah. Having it's, a blast. I, it's so good. Cool. Cause like, that's also been a really something that I've been working on since I was much young, since young, but also in, in recent years is really like claiming my voice or reclaiming my voice and, and owning that. Because when, when I was younger, I actually, uh, I was actually in speech therapy till fifth or sixth grade. Uh, so I literally had difficulty communicating um, physically. Mm -hmm. And after, you know, school and post, uh, internship but before going to afi sort of figuring all that out and then doing afi and then graduating uh i think i really lost like my core voice or, or like a sense of of what it is that i wanted because you know when as a producer so much of the time we're, we're making stuff for other people um that i really noticed that i was losing my own voice my own sense of self and so this this year uh 2023 and a little bit of, of like last year has, has really been moving into that and moving back into into me as a, a, a storyteller and a filmmaker not just like as a, a not just a crew member but you know really as a as a producer and feeling much more comfortable saying no no I have ideas here's what 
I think should happen as opposed to always deferring. So when this movie comes out, it's all about, you know, what's it's like Ken's journey, you know, it's like learning. So I'm like, oh my so God. You, how- you manifested this, man. This is your year. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool to hear though, that, you know, that, that you're going through that right now. And mm-hmm. uh, that even though you, you still have to take jobs and work on other people's things, but you are owning your voice and voice, you know, voicing, you know, you are a creative person and you're, you know, getting yourself to, to give that input. Hopefully you're also like working on your own projects. Yeah. And that's where the, the photo thing has been really helpful. Um, I mean, I did, I did a feature after AFI and like, so if that's, if it burned me out so much. That's also where part of reclaiming sort of my voice has been coming to terms with how that project turned out. I mean, eventually, it, I mean, it's now out there. It just was such a challenging process. When you say you did a feature, you produced it? I, I produced it. And okay. we did two crowdfunds. This is the the director and I. We, we did a crowdfund to film some footage for another crowdfund. Which we then used to make but the you, movie. You crowdfunded to raise money to make a crowdfund video. We crowdfunded a crowdfund. That is so crowdfunded meta. a crowdfund video. So meta. I know it's really crazy, but so what we did is we just we we filmed a little bit and then used that for the crowdfund and then used the footage there to put together a better crowdfund video. Mm-hmm. And uh, in addition, I was also driving Postmates and Uber uh after being on set both for other people's projects and my own and so we would sometimes be filming you know if we were filming in Santa Monica on my way home to I think I was living in Hollywood at the time uh, on my way to Hollywood I would just put on Uber or Uber Eats or Postmates whatever I was feeling like at the time and just pick up some jobs on the way home and keep Mm -hmm. driving until you know, yeah, either got leave your way home. home and make that's actually I mean, it sounds exhausting, but it was it's efficient and it's hey, you're you're scrappy. You're a worker. Yeah. Yeah. And then so for, what's funny, the so the film was called the is called The All Nighter. And now it's on Tubi and Amazon and stuff like that. And um the one of the main character, he needs to make money. And one of the things he does is he starts driving Uber uh as a like a Uber taxi. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but it was very very triggering because I'm like I'm doing this myself to make money for this movie that we're filming because uh, it was like need money for crafty the next day uh, or like the next couple days or actually a couple times I was driving Postmates after being on set of this movie so I could pay the crew oh my god and so I was like okay I uh just a couple hundred short, so we're gonna drive Postmates for you. But it was on you. Yeah. So you you started shooting, but you didn't quite have the whole. You knew going in, you didn't have it all. Yeah. So we we had almost enough, and things you know, not we didn't have any contingency, and so as things would pop up, it was sort of borrowing from the future. And so in order to make sure that we were able to, you know, finish the movie, um, I'd do a little bit of that, a little bit of creativity. Yeah, you have to. I mean, that, you just have to get it done when you're making your first mm-hmm. film. Yeah. Um, well, congrats on finishing it. And you said it's, out, it's on Amazon. That's great. Yeah, this is actually my third feature. So maybe maybe, I haven't, maybe I'm really dumb because I haven't learned my lesson. <laughs> yeah, you got to get other people to pay for. Well, I guess you did do a Kickstarter and all that, but yeah. Um, wait, I'm looking at I'm looking at it on IMDb right now. I see that Marchen uh, shot it. Uh huh. That's very cool. Yeah, we AFI had connection. a couple of uh, actually we had we had three we had three AFI DPs um, for each. I think we actually filmed it in three or four pieces. So we would do two or three days here, you know, and then two or three days here, two or three days here. Uh, but Marchin, yeah, he uh, he filmed the bulk of it, and then also Josh Fisher uh, filmed a couple, a little bit, and then Scott Ray filmed a little bit. Cool. It's like it's, I don't I don't know I don't know what the percentage is anymore. But and then <laughs> yeah, we had a bunch of AFI people or AFI adjacent people. Like um, I don't know, 
if you remember Delroy, he's a sound mixer, but he was, he worked on like 42 or 43 somewhat of the cycle films as a sound mixer and like yeah. got the AFI experience. And uh, yeah. I, I always try and bring him on projects because I feel like he's like an honorable AFI mention. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I love, the, I love people like that. Yeah. Yeah. He was there and it was, it was awesome. I mean, we, we also we did our casting at AFI. Uh, oh, you did? Yeah, I think we're. Uh, I think we're we're the reason there's like a like a, a fee now because we were. I think we did like seventeen castings. It was crazy. <laughs> we abused. We abused for privileges. Oh, you just kept calling in the favors. Uh, well, I mean the uh, the director she couldn't just didn't find the right chemistry for like what we were. Uh, what we were going for 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 some of the roles and so it just took a lot of a lot of sessions to really to really just like get the get the right cast yeah well you know if you did it now we have this alumni center yeah is, is it, have you seen it i have been not been i have been to that room i took one of the classes uh, with carrie carrie oh yeah the one she did on the weekend yeah so wait let's let's talk about because you, you said three features you've produced mm -hmm. Okay. So I did I did one in undergrad, like over spring break that was really, really scrappy. Um that I wrote and directed. It was like a uh uh direct uh senior I guess you call it a senior thesis, but in fall we the fall semester we came up with a project idea and we could do whatever whatever it was we wanted. Um you know, if you want to write a script and then so do in the fall all the prep for your script and then write it in uh, in the spring but I was like okay well I'm going to write the script in the fall and then filmed it in spring over spring break and it's uh, it's called zombie love it's about a man whose wife dies and she, he decides to resurrect her from the dead but she comes back as a zombie and uh cautionary tale <laughs> it was it was it was a lot of fun it, it didn't quite turn out like I'd hoped uh just you know, it's too young and uh not enough resources but then after I came out here uh, I connected with uh, a team of people and we did a, a feature called Obsolidia. And we actually took that to Sundance. Um, it was uh, the writer director is her first feature. And it's about a man who um, he's cataloging all the obsolete things in the world. And he meets a woman who is sort of trying to avoid the past. And they uh, go out to Death Valley to meet a scientist that predicts the end of the world. It's a little bit of a road trip. Uh, where they realize that they're both missing out on what's most important, the present moment. And uh, it premiered at, at Sundance. Yeah, it premiered at Sundance. It was That's crazy. huge. It That's was awesome. awesome. I uh, I just, I didn't know how to Sundance, you know? And so what I did was I went to every movie screening I could. I basically sat in the theater for eight to 10 hours each day and oh then you did it wrong <laughs> i did not do any networking <laughs> other than like in line at to see the movies because i was like well i'm at sundance why, why would you go to movies at a film festival are you crazy <laughs> have we taught you, know, you nothing right? <laughs> well that was before that was before afi right 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 and then, no it is funny it, it takes a couple trips to sundance to figure out like oh yeah. people don't go to movies here they go, uh -uh. go to here to meet and network and yeah they go to meet and network and i met a few people but still it was like i met, I met mark ruffalo in line that's really that's cool. he was nice yeah. um but it's just no i i didn't i had no idea what to do next so that's where i, I just I, I worked in reality for a minute and hmm. the whole that's where like i knew afi would be a good idea in the future especially after it was like okay well how do i follow up this project um tried like some shorts just never couldn't really any get anything to to stick or to see it through but then you know after after going to afi and really just better understanding how to, just the the process works i mean there's still stuff that we learn afterwards <laughs> Well, that's where the real learning happens. <laughs> yeah, but just like being able to to take what I what I what I learned at AFI, and um, now when I go to a festival and and all that stuff, it definitely yeah. means a little. I I don't know. Now I I feel like I'm a little bit more targeted and stuff like that, and really uh, more uh, more like a, a film 
filmmaking uh, missile or something. I don't know. Right. Well, because you because you've experienced so much, so like mm -hmm. you know what what you what isn't for you. Mm -hmm. That's the thing with producing. There's so many different ways to go. There's so yeah. many different areas to go, and you've, and you've tried directing and and writing and not tried it, but you've you've done it. But um, you know, you probably know what you respond to now, right? Yeah, and especially as far as like scripts, and I can definitely sort of got a very good like red flag radar. Like if I, uh, I know I know if something is going to be really rough long before. Um, for for a know, script and for probably for a collaborator, right? For a, for a collaborator character. for a script, you know, especially if it's like, oh, this script is going to be really challenging. It's got you know, if this script is not necessarily going to be doable for what these filmmakers want to achieve. But also, yeah, in with terms of like collaborators and 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 clients, um, and other people that I'm working for. Uh, yeah you know it's like I, I the spidey sense really really comes through strong now uh which i'm very thankful for i mean i still end up like having to do some of these like i worked on a job recently where i uh i didn't i, I guess technically i didn't get fired but i didn't get rehired because the person i was working for i, I had to tell them to speak respectfully to me and to let me do the, the job I was hired for, which was producing. Um, and so this person, how dare you? How dare you? And and it just like really set them off, and it was like, how 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 dare you? So yeah, I mean, but I I knew that one was going to be kind of a uh, iffy, but money being money's a little tight, you know, with the uh, with between sure. the strikes and stuff like that, and so yeah. I. Uh, have not been as discerning <laughs> recently. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. Wait, I want to go back to to AFI because mm -hmm. you know now that I'm piecing it all together. So you come into AFI with two feature films under your belt yeah. as a producer. One of them goes to Sundance. One of them. So you're a Sundance producer of two feature films, and you're starting film school. Yep. Does that? Well, first, like, how do you think the other people in your class reacted to that? The, uh, I think at first people were were quite excited. Not to say that I let them down, but I think that the way that sounds on paper and the way you introduce somebody like that yeah. is a lot different than the reality of it, which is that yeah, we went, we went to Sundance with a very small indie film. And it actually, it actually won a couple of awards. Um, but it's not like the same thing as maybe if I were Spielberg or, or somebody, you know, like earlier in, in their career, uh, but still like really established. Um, but like, but that's the balance, right? Because if you were, then you wouldn't be at film. Yeah, I guess not. Right. But mm -hmm. it's a good lesson. I, you know, people saw it clearly that, Oh, you think that's that's the end game, and if you make it to Sundance, you're you're set for life. But the reality is, most films and filmmakers that go there, you know, th they end up like you. End up mm -hmm. meaning like it doesn't launch your career. It's the ones you hear about in the headlines, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, our year, the our Sundance year was not rough, just in that uh, the the film that we were up against was Winner's Bone, mm. and it is so good. Have you seen yeah. Winner's Bone? Of course. Yeah. I mean, that launched Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, that's the film that beat us out uh, as far as like really getting the, all the. Well, press. at least you can say, like, right. You, no, it's a good movie. You're like, hey. And I'm totally get it. I mean, that one, it's a, it's way more ours about is about a, li a librarian who goes on a road trip. Winner's Bone was way more <laughs> of an intense film. And so it's not, uh, I, I don't feel like I missed out anything at, at all, but the, uh, Somebody did ask me, I was like, okay, so what, why would you go back to film school? And for me, it was that I knew that there was more I could learn. And there I knew that I could continue to like really refine myself as a storyteller and as a producer. Um, and that this, this was one way to like really uh, 
am amplify that and like jumpstart it, not not having to. It's gonna. It's like a multiplier, you know. From after being an AFI, every every experience is like a is, is twice as valuable or something to me. I don't mm -hmm. know. To where I I feel like I get a lot more even out of stuff where, you know, this year I've I've, I've even picked up a few PA jobs. Just like you know, like do you, Leal, um, a, a few of yeah. his uh jobs where you know, he need, needs somebody to work. I'm like. I need the money. There's nothing else happening between because of the strikes, and I actually really like it. It's nice. Uh, it's nice not to have all the responsibility. And <laughs> you're like I, that guy's the producer. Don't yeah, bother me. <laughs> no, it's great. And then you know, I mean, this sounds crazy, but I'm able to go stand by monitor, and since the first AD is right there by monitor, um, I can peek and peer all I want, uh, and take in as much knowledge as I want. Uh, I just occasionally have to go like take out the trash. And so it's yeah. been really, really actually awesome to go back to some of like my earliest jobs, you know, truck PA and stuff like that. And just go back to basics and just say, okay, you know, how can I be the most like supportive PA possible? Like taking all what I've learned at AFI, which is funny, uh, and just really anticipating everything that's needed on 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 set, just for the sake of because you know, I mean, yeah. I don't have to. Um, I mean, this also answers the question you said people would ask you: Why would you go back to film school? It just shows that like you at your core are just a lifetime film student. Like you're mm -hmm. back on sets, just soaking it up, right? Yeah. And it's like you know, the if the ultimate question is like, is there life after film school? your life should always be film school if you want yeah. to work in the film industry. Yeah, no, I think, I think so. I think I would, uh, I mean, I would suggest everybody, you know, that's when, when they first come out to LA, like PA, PA on a few things. Um, but even later in the career, just to, to take that moment to, to be humble and to really, to me, what PA is about is about supporting the It's, it's, to me, it's the most supportive job on set. Uh, you help the most people, you have the most impact on everybody. Doing simple things like setting up lunch and and all that, and so to me, it's very much like a Buddhist practice. Um, you know, PA and and I and I treat it when 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 I do get these opportunities. If I can, I usually say yes. Um, if I'm not working on something else, just because I like I think of it that way is like how do I be of service and every single time it either leads to like a cool experience or meeting some interesting people or learning sort of a like even when things go bad like with i worked on a music video two weeks ago lunch was three hours late three hours but Gosh. yeah i mean a lot of people were grumpy i mean i had just some snacks and i was like all right i mean yeah meal penalty or whatever but uh i you know I would never want to see what that is like on my own set to have a three hour lunch, late lunch, but seeing how people reacted on this one was very valuable. And so, yeah. you know, it was just really great to, uh, <laughs> yeah, just to, to learn in a way, you know, it's hard work. Sure. What a, what a great way to look at it. You know, every single scenario is like a, something you can learn from that you can apply to your mm -hmm. filmmaking career, your producing career. And that message of like, how can I be of service? It's interesting because it came up recently. We did a kind of a career coach came and just like answered whatever various questions different disciplines had. And, you know, he said that like always, always like, let that be your mantra, right? Like as far as, you know, people are like, how do you network? How do you work a party? How do you, you know, do this? How do you meet these people? And if you come at it from, from the mindset of how can I be of service? which, you know, uh, I've always tried to do, you know, at AFI, it's like, how can yeah. I help you? How can I help you as an alum? How can I help you as a fellow? You know, it, it's sometimes it, you can, you can smell it when it's forced, but like, who cares, you know, but it's the best way to, to network, to start a relationship, to just say, hey, you know, we're here to help. I'm here to help. Yeah, it totally is. And it's where, uh, I find that it's when when I don't have when I don't know what else to do or if I don't know what to do. The thing that I always go back to is like how how can I help someone you know with something whatever that something may be, 
and it usually breaks whatever you know it's writer's block go help somebody you know having getting career woes go help somebody and it's uh yeah it's a different it's a different way of looking at the world i don't think a lot of people think that way yeah it's 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 just getting out of your own head you know mm -hmm. it's getting out of like just thinking about yourself and i mean literally it is it's just not thinking about yourself and it will unlock things and hopefully just let you realize oh wait not everything's about me mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and i mean oh gosh that's uh that's one that a lot of a lot of a lot of that mentality it's like about me i think in creative arts and i did notice that a lot that sometimes at afi uh yeah. but the people i think that did the best and achieved the things that they wanted to achieve really really were able to get beyond that sort of that ego and in, in like the pejorative but just sort of like that really think of themselves as the fabric you know like up not just being at afi but being afi i guess that's sort of how i kind of felt that's wow i've never heard it said like that and uh that's that's really cool I kinda... because I, I mean otherwise yeah. it's just a building you know and it's just yeah. a bunch of books and i guess some dvds but really what makes afi is the people yeah. and like a like a library is a library because of the people who use it and like a school is a school because of the, the people who are teaching there and the people who want to learn and you know that's where to, to what you're saying is you know life life is film school um everyone is my classmate and everybody's my teacher uh no matter whether they're like their first time on set or something i, I think i can probably learn more from somebody who's never been on set so they teach us patience and like it's those are really fun to be around yeah know, teach us wide-eyed uh, and excited about everything happening mm -hmm. reinvigorates you you're like oh yeah wait this is I'm, I'm always trying to like push that message like remember why you got into this because it was fun it was like an yeah. excuse to hang out with your friends and do something fun yeah i uh I, I I used to jo joke. I'm I I didn't come to AFI to make friends. I came to win. But I'm, I made a lot of friends. That's why you did so well in reality TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. No, I actually I made a lot of friends. I I didn't go to a lot of parties to be honest. And uh, somebody did say their their one piece of advice was to avoid the drama. And I I didn't go to as many parties as I probably could have or should have to like network um but i've always been like I, I really like to network by working and so the people yeah. that i got to work with either through cycle or thesis or dww are all pretty much people i stay in touch with in some way or another um yeah yeah i'm, I'm just thinking through yeah the people that, that i'm closest to are the ones that i that i worked for who was your thesis team so I did, I did two. Um, I was with Santiago and Raza and uh, Chris Young. Mm -hmm. And we had an outside PD. And then I also wrote a thesis for Mary Merkins and Rena and Rosie. And I think we had an outside PD. Mm. Wow, a, a producer got their thesis greenlit. That's shocking. How yeah, yeah. Um, Rasa, by the way, has just been killing it out there. Yeah, like, constantly like shooting features, and their his work is amazing. Yeah, I think he's he's uh, so, he said he was like on his eighth or ninth or tenth or something. It's like yeah, and then shooting shorts in between. Like he just did one with Christopher Greenslate, um, that I just we just watched the other day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's he, cool. uh, Greenslate directed it. Um, it was really good. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Uh that's that's cool though. That's that's you did too. Yeah, I was very thankful. I uh yeah, I know. I I definitely uh appre appreciate that <laughs> they let me do that. But it was like one at the very beginning and then our it was at the very very end. So, yeah. It was like very cool. very wide. So what did uh what is something that you learned at film school that you took on to into your career? Uh, I would say 
it the intensity the intense focus on story and really and really making everything story and treating that as the lifeblood of everything that we're doing is something it's probably it's probably the biggest takeaway I got from AFI um and really learning how to cut through everything else and just what is going to support what is supporting that story um that's that's man that's bread and butter at AFI story work yeah yeah I know you, you can usually tell if someone went to AFI in any of the disciplines if they start asking questions from the point of view of story yeah yeah and you know i've started really thinking about that even when i uh like i started i was redoing my website and stuff like that and just thinking about okay how do i how do i tell my story in this particular format you know thinking of it and then yeah even instagram and stuff like that not uh i mean i've I've had instagram for a long time but really focusing more on using it as a a narrative tool yeah Um, in addition to like a promotional tool and just like a time killer but just really thinking about how to how is the art that i create contributing to my 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 story that's a that's a really yeah it's a very intentional way to do it and i'm I'm always impressed by those instagram pages that are so like perfectly like they all fit together and they all make sense and then i look at mine i'm like why is there a a picture of a meatball and then there's a picture of me at a halloween party like what am i doing maybe it makes more sense than you think i don't know i uh (laughs) I'm going to figure out that story. There's a meatball. That's one of the main characters. Uh, (laughs) That seems very, very, very appropriate. (laughs) The meatball's journey. Um, Okay. I'm going to be, I'm going to be cognizant of your time. Oh, yeah. No, it's all good. Okay. Well, I I want to bring it back to, because something you talked about, which, you know, it's communication is so important for producers, but anyone in this industry, hell, anyone doing anything. Uh, But you, you said that you, uh, had speech therapy right mm-hmm. when you were younger and do you think that's i mean we agreed that one of your skills one of your one of your weapons is your communication skills do you think having to go through speech therapy and really kind of focus on it and analyze your own communication helped you become a better communicator in general I th- y- y- yes but it wasn't until i was older that i really thought about not just how what I'm saying, but the why of of of, of what I say, and it, it definitely made me more articulate, and probably set probably set the maybe maybe set the the groundwork or you know like in sort of the way you prep a bed for you know when you garden in the springtime you know maybe it was like prepping the soil for for a future in communication um because it's really hard to see what it would be like without if i if i hadn't gone through this experience right um and you know i know i know plenty of people that are great communicators that didn't go to speech therapy and i know plenty of people who didn't go to speech there who who didn't need to and they can't communicate at all uh sure terrible but sure I, i i do think that since it's something that I had to learn how to do, uh, fr- from 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 like a like a professional, that it's uh, definitely made me more curious with things like like I I've, I'm fascinated by language and 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 what words mean and what symbols mean and that's what I think what I really really love about filmmaking and, and storytelling through film because so we have so many sim- symbols that we get to play with. Mm-hmm. And, or create and create and and we also have the words and there's so many layers to all that but i do think going through that experience of, of having to learn how to talk from somebody other than just you know copying our parents uh probably probably changed the way the change the way i see the world or change the way i uh think about the world or maybe engage with it um yeah. So, you know, it's like, it's just sort of the, one of the things we learn how to do, right? It's just, no one never, it's like, oh, you have to teach the kid how to talk. It's just, they start talking. 
Yeah, it's one of the things we have to learn how to do, but it's it's again, it goes back to intentionality. Like, how are we going about it? How is someone guiding us through it? Is, are they just letting you learn? Or, you know, if you do have to focus on it and study it, um, there, there's something about the way you process information. I watch you, you know, before you say something, you really think about it. And then the way you take your time to communicate it, uh, that I feel like most people don't do. So that, yeah, that could just be, I don't know if that's nature or nurture or what, but it's, it's usually a it's, little bit of both, isn't it? Right. Yeah. All I know is it's something good. And, you know, <laughs> I feel like you should be teaching a course on it, you know, if you knew what you were doing. Yeah. Um, oh, but another thing about AFI, when you said that you re you're really interested in um, language, but you were talking about that Korean cinematographer, which is like, you know, very, it's not unique to AFI, but we do have a big uh, percentage of international fellows mm -hmm. here, right? So you are forced to communicate and collaborate with people from all over the world, you know, and they all have varying levels of, of, you know, English speaking skills. Um, and, you know, people have to navigate that. And some people are good at it and some people are bad at it. And you, you figured that out, but do you think that's another thing that kind of helped you like going, like being intentional and being aware of it, right? A lot of people go through AFI and they don't even know, or they yeah. fail at it, but having to communicate with all those do other different people in your class. Yeah, I think so. Also, I mean, I had also done a bit of, uh, just like, you know, like, therapy and, and counseling um when i was younger and it definitely makes me think more about how how i'm engaging with somebody and how best to uh well get my own point a uh, point across but you know, I was thinking I, I've I've never done a debate class or anything like that, and so I've never I've never learned that sort of I don't want to call it combative. I can't think of a better word, but sort of some people have sort of an adversarial type approach to communication or even negotiation. You know, mm -hmm. um, like all of this AM, AMPTP stuff. And yeah, what well, you need to get you in the room. Right? I, oh my God, I would solve this. It's just like, guys, can't we know that I would never because I would just give the guilds everything that they want. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I I try to think of everything as n n there's never a zero sum game that we're always trying to find some amount of uh, compromise. Mm -hmm. And whatever it's going to take yeah you know with i guess very few exceptions um i'm usually willing to to find a compromise to to make something work because it's always well at least on in, on set or on in the context of film it, it's it's about getting the story done and it doesn't matter if i'm right if the movie doesn't get made um and so you know, I've, I've definitely, as I've been getting, you know, gotten older and had more experience on set, learned that it, some things just don't matter as much and mm -hmm. being able to like let, let certain things go and, you know, not to put my parents on blast, but growing up, they were very much always fine. It was all about finding fault and who, who was to blame for something. It's there always had to be somebody that was the cause and however petty it was i mean once they established that then they'd move on but it was just so obsessed with you know oh who's who caused the thing and i am a who cares who caused the thing what are we going to do about it uh i definitely think it helps me on set as far as problem solving so i'm trying to figure out well whose fault is it like, well, yeah yeah the the hours wasted on that especially when time is time is limited on set yeah. uh whereas it, it, it's so valuable to have someone like yourself that will just say doesn't matter how do we fix it you know that's i i'm the same in you know relationships friendships at work who cares like how, how do we solve it especially when yeah. it's something urgent yeah so. Good, good quality for everyone to share. Okay, last thing I'll ask you this. Oh, sure. Because um, it sounds like 
film school was mostly really good experience for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was missing now that you've been out in the real world and you did the real world before film school? What was a piece now that you look back and you go, oh, God, I wish film school had included this, had talked about this, had taught us this? I was, this sounds so naive, but I was unprepared for how little film school would matter. After okay, that'll be all. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh i you know i i had no illusions that it would be still a challenge to try and get a movie made and and, and um get some uh get some attention but i did i did think that having been having afi on my resume and having been at afi would matter more to more people but there's still the biggest thing is who's in it, how much does it cost, and am I going to risk anything on it? And that's, you know, that's business. That's business, babe. Yeah. And it's, you know, I don't think it makes film school any less valuable, the experience less valuable to me, because I, I do know that it, it made me a better storyteller. But I I think I could have been maybe uh, maybe a little bit more emphasis on the networking side of things, which is like how do you how do you learn how to network? But really really learning how to leverage like the 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 network that we have and and how to build on that. Um, we did learn a bit of that, but it but really but but just like learning really how to target it and who's going to be most important to each of us. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I was still maybe relying too much on, on being found or wanting to be found. You mean like letting your work speak for itself and they'll come to me? Yeah, yeah. And it's not even like letting my work speak, but as far as tooting my own horn and really promoting myself, because mm. I do think that I wanted my work to speak for myself as opposed to have, you know, like having to say, oh, I'm the best, you know, hire me. Yeah. And what you need to do is say, I'm the best, hire me because of my work. Uh, <laughs> Don't listen I, to me, I, listen to Sundance. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I bear it. Like, I, authenticity is really important to me. And I really want people, I want to know that. I when I when I'm hired on something or when somebody wants to work with me, it, it's because of of legitimately of what I have done, not just because I've done a good job at selling myself. Um, and so I've been a little bit of a overcorrection back to sort of okay, it's it's okay. I mean, we can still do that and promote ourselves. And yeah. so uh, learning, learning how to better promote myself and to treat and basically how to be my own agent, I guess, is what I'm learning uh, more now. Yeah. Well, this is, as we spoke about, it's your year of reclaiming. Yeah. Power. Yeah. So this is the time to do that. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. And, you know, I mean, everything, everything happens whenever it happens. So it's like, uh, I could, we can, we can get, spend all day saying, I wish I would have done this sooner, but. Now is the right time for me. So, yeah. And the good news is that like those those film school connections, they don't go away, right? Mm -hmm. They they still exist. You just have to yeah. reignite them. And and I'm glad that you know you're coming out to like the barbecues and like things like that. And you know we'll figure out other ways to get you more involved. But uh, like I I I do think that those are important and they lead to things. And mm -hmm. you know, especially with some distance and maturity. Not that you were ever immature. It sounds like. But yeah, I'm just saying like in general for other people that I've talked to, it's like good to, you know, come back, come back totally. and connect. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's good to, yeah, to take, to take, and take some space and, and, and connect. I mean, we sort of, we were forced to take some space with the old Rona, with the, the Panini. Uh, <laughs> so sometimes I have to, sometimes I'm a little hard on myself and I, for better or for worse, I forget about the you know covid and all that um I'm like well why am i not why wasn't i networking because <laughs> you were working from home for two years you idiot 
Yeah. No, you got to like eliminate those ears. They don't count. Don't don't worry about it. Pass. So, yeah. Give yourself a pass. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. that but with within that still just sort of really understanding that like I I need to say oh no this this is the stuff that I'm doing you know and really really pushing my my work on on the different like social media pl- platforms and yeah like reaching out to agents and critics and hey you know here's here's the things I'm doing uh yeah well for example the movie that you just produced Mm -hmm. that's that's on amazon yeah did we put that out in the alumni newsletter Uh we did yeah yeah uh, that means you told us i told uh uh the june is what june or july whichever i forget whichever okay good uh, one of the ones but the uh yeah yeah yeah. so i just want to make sure i'm getting on it yeah thanks for asking yeah it was great it was uh yeah the uh now Amazon does not pay much. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah, unless they, pr- you know, they produce your movie, but yeah, yeah, but it's there, you know. And also, um, I think Amazon is non-exclusive, right? Like they don't own it, right? Correct. Mm-hmm. Right. So something to look into are these uh, fast channels and SVOD. Have you looked into those? Yeah. So uh, we uh, there's a company, Indie Rights. Have you heard of them? No, they're, but I know there are a bunch of these. Yeah, they, so they uh, they just they're basically I don't I wouldn't say they're bottom of the barrel, but they they work with very small independent films, and they help they help they helped us get it on Amazon and get it on some of these ones, and so they don't actually do they won't do any promotion other than I mean they're at AFM and they have our poster up, yeah, uh, but they at least provide some framework, you know, yeah. And so yeah, so they so they helped us out uh, get it on Amazon, and uh, a few things. It's like it's just a good, they're good just to even just like a sounding board. Yeah. And what about the other one? What about the Sundance one? So that one that was with um. So that that is that was on it was on Netflix actually. Uh, oh yeah, you said that. Yeah, but now it's now it's on Amazon. It's on the it's on the iTunes. It's like uh, okay. you can like rent it. But yeah, it was actually yeah, it's free. It was it was available for rent on uh, on Netflix for a while before cool. in the before uh, before Netflix started cutting all their cutting all the stuff. Their license deals. Yeah. 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 Right. So, Only showing we, their own stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you know that's how it goes. But we were with um, gosh, what's the name of it? Cinevate. Uh, it's in a, it's another a distributor is that the distributor yeah distributor yeah they, it's funny they got bought there were, we were with one but then they got bought by another and then they got bought by a bigger one and so now i i just mentioned the bigger one so <laughs> well and one day like you know apple will buy them and you'll be like yeah, yeah. my movies with apple yeah. yeah yeah i mean that's i don't i mean that's why i say with with the all-nighter it's like oh yeah my, my movie's on amazon <laughs> you have to rent oh, but it. that does honestly that does mean something and so it does yes. I, I yeah i mean i'm yeah shout that and shout that and promote the hell out of that and you know i i know it's it's always hard than getting the next one and you can't do it the way you've been doing it forever Mm-mm. right so is there anything you know cooking uh l- lately i've been uh really been enjoying photography so we'll see where that goes in in part because it's just a lot easier to manage um because yeah. even a short film like I, I did a short film with a friend of mine in april and now we're we've submitted to a bunch of festivals so we're just waiting to to hear back but it's really short it's just like a four minute kind of like a haiku little vignette from uh one of the uh it's like these tour guides the horse tour guides that take people to the hollywood sign oh yeah and so it's like a semi biographical vignette from his life you know it's Mm -hmm. the kind of thing where it definitely something like that has happened but this particular scene is completely fake but just like a simple and so but that uh we're using it maybe to turn into a feature uh not a haiku feature but sort of a maybe some stories there and then uh but yeah, the photography thing's been fun. So I'm, I'm I might I might try and, and, and do a lot more of that because I've, I've photo produced uh, like in the branded content side of things. Yeah. But I just I really enjoy working with people and being directly creative. Yeah. Sort of. I guess 
photographer is also kind of like a directing role but yeah oh for sure you're, mm -hmm. you're doing everything all at once right yeah production but design and lighting and directing uh -huh. and, yeah yeah but it's a, lot, it's a lot easier when it's just one 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 frame versus you know trying to do 24 frames a second for 10 minutes i'm gonna have i'll i will check out your stuff after this yeah so yeah your instagram is that where yeah, you I've got uh, I've got I've got also I've got a photo website. I've split that off from my I've got two websites now. Wow. Uh, but yeah, I've got my uh, Ken Morris dot photography. That's my uh, okay. photo website. And then also on, on Instagram, uh, Ken Morris dot photo. OK, mm -hmm. are you getting hired as a photographer? Uh, I'm getting there are people that want to work with me. They just haven't been paying much well that's how it starts that's how it starts yeah no but there's actually yeah a few people uh i've done like some portrait sessions and some documentary coverage that's been a lot of fun mm -hmm. and mostly it's just been a great way it's just to meet some new friends i uh people have asked me they're like oh yeah good are you gonna keep on doing this it's like yeah you know i think so it's a great way it really is a great way to meet people you know and it's just oh, like yeah i i play too i mean i'm, I'm well i'm shooting through my camera yeah. right now, my dslr oh um, nice i, I was I, gonna try and get mine set up but i uh it's just it, too much i i had it all set up during covid because i was doing a lot of uh moderating a q and a's for, yeah. for afi and i was like oh, i'm gonna have a professional setup and then i oh broke great it down. but then for this i've been trying to use it but I'm yeah yeah it looks photos. good i'm looking at your stuff oh there. nice yeah uh this is cool sometimes film mostly digital i yeah. like it yeah i actually i taught myself to develop film this year oh you so you do it at home uh-huh oh wow yeah because i had been going to a lab but uh it was getting expensive and yeah. uh the company i was working for when they they let most of the people they let a bunch of people go myself included I was like, well, I can't afford to go to a lab, so how do I, how do I develop film on it cheap? Yeah. So I got a, I got on YouTube and learned. Is that, YouTube's amazing for that, right? It's amazing. And is it once you learn it, is it pretty easy? If you can, if you can mix a drink, if you can make an old fashioned, you can develop film. You just have to, like, you just have to be a little bit more careful not to expose it to light. But it's you're mixing chemicals. You just don't drink these ones. It's really, it really is. I hey, mean, you make your own rules. Easier, Don't but... tell me what to do with my chemicals. <laughs> By the way, th that is, that's the title of this. It's like, if you can make an old fashioned, you can develop your own film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, that's so cool. I love that you're, that you found a, like a cool new passion and yeah. you're really, really turning it into something. So yeah, we'll see where it goes. I, uh, in the meantime, right now I'm just sort of waiting the uh, I'm trying to stay busy, but not uh, get so caught up in like because when when are, when's the strike going to be over? I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to make plans. Yeah, and to like take meetings, and so that's where the the photo thing has has sort of filled that gap where I can still connect with people, meet people, still be creative, still uh, tell stories. Yeah, um, but you know. We'll see. You know, the best kind of uh, photography, I mean, the, the way to like just practice and, and it, to, for me has always been uh, on set, BTS yeah. photography. Oh, I'd love but, that. Oh, you, you're around filmmakers, uh, you know, and you have the easiest job on set and you yeah. have access everywhere and everything is perfectly lit for you, <laughs> even yeah. crew members. And there's always something yeah. happening, you know, something dramatic, somebody's playing with equipment. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah, I would love to. I would love to do more of that. I uh, I snuck I snuck a little bit of that in uh, on this uh, music video I was working on. Yeah, just sh and shared it with because they they had somebody else that was doing stills. But they weren't doing BTS. They were doing like stills of the artist. Oh, so it was like different production stills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'm like, yeah, but I want to photograph the people that like the crew members and the. Yeah. Like, yeah. But, there you go. But so anytime really you're on set, hardcore. have have your camera with you. Yeah, that's the other great part about it is that you can just always. It's like it's just a little piece of equipment, you know. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, everybody relies on this thing now. But come on, you're a real photographer. <laughs> <laughs>
Ken, this has been a blast. Uh, yeah, thanks for thanks. so much time. You're 